story of adopting two other Moravian kids, we said no, I think it is better for the children to be taken care of by another person who can meet all the needs and other factors which ought to be done to the children. Back into the country, Kenyan members of parliament have set in motion a plan to receive an estimated 3.7 billion shillings for eight months. Their five-year term will be cut when the general election is held on August the 8th. MPs insist that they must be given a severance pay in lieu of the months they feel entitled to. The Parliamentary Commission would include the MPs' final dues, the gratuity and, if agreed, the severance pay. MPs' pay will increase to 710,000 in their final year. The annual salary increase comes in April, the month they were sworn into office. MPs and senators are now earn an average of 1.1 million Kenya shillings, which means that the taxpayer will have to part with 3.7 billion for the legislators. One of the arguments against such pay has been that it would trigger similar demands from county assemblies. Uh, representatives have filed a case in the High Court on the length of their terms. Members of Parliament are already entitled to a gratuity calculated at the rate of 31% of their annual basic pay. All right, and uh, to just talk about uh, this uh, let's now speak to Ken Gishinga who is a chief economist joining us live from our city center studios to understand whether the Kenyan economy or Kenya basically can afford to pay members of parliament another 3.7 billion on top as a severance pay a very good afternoon to you thank you for coming in can we afford this um, thank you Akisa I mean if you look at the peer review um, exercise that was done last weekend one of the challenges was that Kenya has a ballooning wage bill, meaning we cannot afford the salaries that we are paying. So for this to come in and for the MPs to come and suggest that they need more money, this means it will have a detrimental effect on the economy. So I think it's something we have to be very cautious about and wait very carefully. Ken, um, going by the reports that we've gotten about this particular situation is that um, uh, rumor has it that members of parliament are actually holding a uh, treasury at ransom saying that if you don't, do not give us this, we will not pass your 2016-2017 budget. So how is this expected to pan out? And looking at the problems that the country is currently facing, we have drought in many parts of the country. Doctors are on strike and uh, lecturers are on strike. Nurses the other day were also threatening to go on strike. Is this feasible? Um, as I said, this is something that's completely unsustainable. Um, let me say it's also not unprecedented because if you remember a few years ago, parliamentarians did the same thing. They say the budget won't be allowed to pass if their parks are not uh, revised. So I think the sad part is I think Kenyans are looking to parliament for leadership. And I think leadership is lacking because, as you say, the country's growth forecast has been lowered. Um, we are facing severe drought. We have strikes from doctors and lecturers. And we just can't afford to pay more wages. So the reality is what can happen? And why are we even allowing parliament to set its own salary? That's always been a historical debate. We have a salary and remunerations commissions that's supposed to be completely independent and completely objective on the issue of salaries. So I think this is an issue that uh, must go to the court. We need to get a legal interpretation. But as an economist, I would tell you this is not spelling good fortunes for the country. Speaking to the Kenyan Monanchi, if at all, uh, members of parliament get what they want, what would this mean for our economy? It would mean a higher wage bill. Already the government is spending way more than it's earning from tax collection and that's why the government has to go and borrow money to plug a deficit. So if we were to grant these salary increases or these extra packs, this means the government will have to borrow even more and already the issue of public debt is in the public arena. Have we, have we borrowed too much from the foreign powers? So I think it's the political economy of the question is looking very untidy. And the sooner parliamentarians can 